Ole Olsen is the opponent, a youngster. But we've seen some youngsters have some success in Magic recently. And we're going to start things off right now with a mountain. Oh, a little Dragon Master Outcast action. Not the best play on turn one, but it is something to get things started with. And still very threatening. You get Shira needs to answer this sooner rather than later. It's a Limbing Spires here for Egashira. And now we start things back to Olsen. He's got a swamp and a turn two play after an attack here. It'll be a Myers Malice. Target opponents comes to discard a card, I believe. Actually, take that back. I don't. I don't believe that's a carrier case. thrall. That's my fault. I apologize. I guess here with just an island. He'll pass the turn back. Olsen, you see his Jun colors here this week, and he's got all three colors. There's the forest. We'll see some beatdowns here in just a moment. Malakir familiar, very good curve to start off here for Olsen. Now, one thing to note about this format, it, typically you don't see beatdowns like this, especially in sealed, right? It's rare, but if you have a low power pool, it's a reasonable way to try to beat more powerful decks. Now, there is the Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Now, we talked to Brad, we talked to Tom, we talked to BDD, we talked to all these guys, even people on the floor this weekend. They can't stop talking about this card. Arguably one of the best commons, possibly the best common in blue, though. Clutch of Currents probably has it covered, but an important sealed staple. The Touch of the Void, going to clear out the Sky Spawner. Just off of the Scion token is Kenji. Here come the beatdowns from Olsen. Going to leave that Dragon Master Outcast back. Wants to work towards six land and start pumping out some Dragon tokens there. So. Uh, by all accounts, I think this is a very good start here for Ali. Now, obviously, the question is, what's he got left in hand? What's he got to work with here? It's a solid start. But as you know, in Sealed, you have to have a really aggressive deck to be able to capitalize on something like this. Well, he's still in Lance and Spell territory. Any spell he can cast is obviously good. And the lands get him to Dragon Master Outcast. We'll see what's next here for Agashira. Looks like our removal spell is going to take care of the familiar. Copy of out number there. Just has to pass the turn back. Three mana. Could be representing, representing a bevy of things here. A forest here from Olsen. That's five lands. That's one away from the outcast. And Igashura representing another removal spell if he was using Use a removal spell on the familiar rather than the outcast. Looks like we're going to have a Titan's presence. I'll take care of the creature. And now we're heading back to way. Now, he's doing fine. But again, now he's in this area where land over six is a problem. Well, he's chained together two removal spells on other threats, so I have to imagine there's a response left for the, the outcast. Sure. I would certainly hope so. So he'll play a creature and pass the turn back here. Kozilek's channeler here. And, and again, now with land number six from Olsen, I think we're going to see whatever the removal spell is from Igashira that he was holding back. The channeler kind of interesting card here in these Eldrazi decks, and just kind of in general in this format. Any deck can play it. Being able to ramp is actually pretty helpful because then you get to start going to Rune Processor and a bevy of other things. And it's a fine body, too. Yeah. I mean, five mana for a 4 4, you're not paying a huge cost there, and it does facilitate a lot of the format's most powerful plays. Does he have the removal spell? We assume that he does, and yes, he does. His Stone's Fury, it's going to take care of that Dragmaster Outcast. There's land number seven, but land number seven doesn't help very much. And now this was the problem, right? You got off to a very far, fast start if you were Olsen. Now the land is starting to come a little bit because we're talking about a format where you have 18, 19 lands in the deck. Now it doesn't look like he has anything to play. He got off to a great start, made a play on turn one, two, and three, but Igashira had a great curve here with the, spy, the Sky Spawner backed up by several removal spells. And now Olsen looks like he's flooding out. Here come the beatdowns from the Chandler and the Scion token yet again. Igashira's got a follow-up. Make it two of them, and it'll pass the turn back over to Olsen. And Ali can only just play a land and pass the turn back. A little bit of frustration on his side of the board. And Isle in the draw here for Kenji. You saw it. Harold of Kozilek last turn, allowing for a discount on the Mist Intruder. 
Here come the beatdown. So even a little bit of ingest action is going to take place here. See Agashira pointing out what the missing intruder will do. Electile Swamp here. Nothing all that impressive. He'll play an island pass the turn back. Olsen at one. Not too much is going to get him out of this situation, unfortunately. Especially with his Jun deck. At this point, Agashira even has something like Rolling Thunder covered. So yep. I imagine we're going to game two here shortly. A mountain going to bring anything exciting to the party here? Does not appear to be the case. Removal spell will take care of the channeler. It'll be processor assault. It'll deal five damage to take care of the 4-4. But again, looks to be dead on the board. Kenji will attack and will get the job done. So Kenji Gashira is going to win game number one here over Ali Olsen. Blue, red, up a game here over Jund. Now, one thing in Limited, typically in Constructed, we'll bring up the sideboards. We'll talk about the 15 cards they can bring in and out. But with Limited, it's a completely different animal, especially in Sealed, but with sideboarding. Well, there, there's still a bit of sideboarding that can go on here. Olsen showed a very aggressive deck. And if Igashira has some earlier blockers that he can go to, he's likely to bring them in. It's interesting, I, I said, you know, we're not necessarily going to see these synergy-dense decks in Sealed. People just... It's often going to be, you have your two colors, you have the cards that you have, and you make the best that you can out of it. Igashura does have a pretty loud Devoid theme going on, which is common to blue-red decks in draft, not necessarily in seal, but a, a lot of synergies there, um, some amount of ingesting and processing, uh, but a very loud Colorless Matters theme. Now, there are some good things going on here in Ali Olsen's deck. I'm taking a look at the deck list right now. I mean, we're talking three Touch of the Voids. He's got a Stone Fury, so those are some nice removal spells. He has a Smothering Abomination, which is a nice card to be having in a deck. Dragmaster Outcast we saw in that particular game. So there are some powerful cards going on here. Um, you know, he flooded out that game. That, that happens, obviously, in Limited on occasion. Two, ter two Territorial Balos as well. Some pretty good mana. So there are some things to like here. And Dragon Master Outcast is one of the more powerful cards you can have in the format. And yep. it's, a, it's a challenging card to play against, too, because you have to be able to respect that card much later on in the game than you had to do with, with one drops typically. And it puts a lot of pressure on the way that Igashira has to time his removal spells. That said, it looks like Igashira has quite a bit of removal. And he has an um, at home Hellkite as well, which yep. is a pretty good answer if you can back it up with any sort of land drop. So he's got it covered in a variety of respects, but it's a, a card he has to respect. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here for game number two as round number one of Grand Prix Atlanta is underway. We've got Numot, the Nummy, in the feature match area. That's Kenji Egashira. Some other players in the feature match area with no buys this week. And Michael Jacob, who does have a Pro Tour top eight to his name. And we're going to see as the buys start becoming eliminated and players start working away in the tournaments. Some pretty big names among these over 2,000 people here in attendance this weekend. And it, we talked a lot during the pregame of what's the land count like in this format. Egashira here on 18 lands. Uh, Ten islands, six mountains, so definitely bias towards blue with an evolving wild and a looming spires. Okay. No surprise there. You're going to see a lot of lands in people's decks. That does not surprise me one bit. That's what this format really is all about. At least it feels like it to me. We, we talked to Brad, Brian, Tom, a lot of people on the floor this weekend. But how many lands do you want to play? Would you even play 20? And some players said, yeah, I'll play 20 lands. Depends on the pool, but uh, you can playing 18 with Kozilek's Channeler. So he's got a lot of mana. Uh, not a whole lot in terms of, of big payoff cards. Scott looking through here. A room processor, a scour from existence, and he's playing one of two copies of the Drazi Devastator in his pool. Okay. So not an enormous top end, but still enough for him to play 18. Yeah, the other thing that's going to be interesting to me is to see how many people play their Eldrazi and how many they play. You know, some people opt to play two big Eldrazi creatures, three, maybe even four if the pool allows it, so... Well, they're also, they're not all created equal. This and, is true. And, and cards like Breaker of Armies and, and Bane of Balagad are powerful enough that even if your deck really isn't looking to play that many expensive cards, those cards can win games on their own and people will make efforts to put them in their pool. Looks like we're going to have a mulligan here for Olsen. I guess Shira waiting patiently. He'll keep his hand. Looks like Olsen's actually going to go down to five. Ruin Processor, on the other hand, is... is good in some decks, and, and if you're able to ingest frequently, it's going to be a, a, a pretty solid play, but it's not something that's necessarily going to be an auto occluded in every pool. Yep. I feel the same about El Eldrassi Devastator as well. Yeah, same, yeah. same story there. Deathless Behemoth, another one. Not that that card's all that expensive, but uh, that, play, that card gets played and sealed regardless of what the specifics of your pool look like or what you're trying to accomplish.
And Olsen here on five cards, uh, compounding this problem is his deck is a solid three colors, uh -huh. and it increases the likelihood that he just can't get his color mana working. On top of that, one of the most powerful cards in this pool is Dragon Master Outcast, and getting to six lands when you're on five cards, also problematic. I'm out to start things here in game number two. Agashira with a land. And he will sacrifice his Evolving Wilds. That one, I think we're going to see a lot of. It's one of the most important commons in Sealed. Yeah. It's not necessarily the most powerful card you can be opening, but uh, it does dictate a lot of what you can do with your pool. With 18 or 19 lands, a lot of people will go to three-color decks because it feels like you have enough lands to facilitate that. But in the absence of Evolving Wilds or some of the battle lands at rare, the, it's tough to cobble together the, the right mana. The mana fixing in the format isn't that great, especially in contrast to something like Konzatark here, where there was a cycle of dual lands at common. Uh -huh. The mana fixing just isn't that dense here. So Evolving Wilds is a very important card. I guess you're with an island. You saw Olsen last turn play a mountain, and he is stuck. He'll have to perhaps just pass the turn back. An island here for Kenji. Back to Ollie we go. A third mountain, but you see underneath his name, the archetype is Jund, not Mono Red. Yeah. And it's a solid three, as you mentioned. I guess sure will draw. Picks up another island, so a little mana heavy here is Kenji, but he's got a spell to play. A vestige of Emrakul. 3 4 Trampler with Devoid. Yep. You called it. There's a real Devoid theme going on with this deck. Yeah, it's it's surprising. I, I don't think Igashira's pool looks that powerful, but it at least is thematic and synergistic. And if you don't have a lot of raw power, that's the next best thing. Olsen with nothing to do just has to pass the turn back. Looks like he'll be taking at least three points of damage this turn. So here come the beatdowns from the Vestige. Touch of the Void, not going to take care of that. I think that he might have one of those in his hands. He does have three copies in his deck this weekend. Does Olsen? Well, the, the Vestige is for toughness, yep. and Touch of the Void is a sorcery, so there's several problems with that plan. Indeed. Core Helm Guide is the play. Now this one, actually a pretty nice card in this format. Uh, I, I think for aggressive, low power decks, this is a, a pretty important card. The boards can stall in a significant way in this format because of uh, the Eldrazi stuff, big creatures, and the Scions mucking up the board. So a way to punch through the last couple points of damage on the ground is important. Tons of Void did it take care of that Coral Helm guide. And this is the Hellkite that yep. I mentioned before. Akum Hellkite is here now. Six mana, four, four flyer. Landfall will trigger it. But at this stage of the game, it can just be a six mana 4 4 flyer and be more than enough. And you see the leftovers in Igashira's hand. No mountains there, but a lot of islands to trigger it. Yep. And that's the nice thing about getting a landfall threat into play is your lands and your spells are both fine draws. Belligerent Whiptail there from Olsen. That's the four mana 4 2. Landfall, when it enters the battlefield under your control, gains first strike. But it's a little bit late to this party. On top of that, it's, it's liable to get killed if Igashira just finds a mountain. It yeah. does not take a lot for him to answer at this point. In the meantime, he can just fly on over. I think that's what we might see him do. Runation Guide was the play to start things off. That's a 3-2 with the Void Ninjas. Other colorless creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, which is convenient. It's a combo. It's, there are many of them. Good with colorless creatures, particularly ones with Trample. Very nice. See, way to put a deck together. Now we're rocking and rolling yep. here in the booth. Titan Coils going to knock down that Whip Tail. It'll block for now. An island here will trigger the Hellkite. Olsen going to fall down to eight. And this might be the last draw step here for Ali, unfortunately. His deck did not come together very well. This game mulligan to five. And again, when you're the full three colors in this format, it can be tough at times. No, he does have one more play. Little converge action there. That'll be the, the to Drew Stalwart. It's no one enters the battlefield, plus one, plus one counter. For each color spent on it, two, of course, so it's a two, three right now. And at common, this is one of the biggest payoffs for playing a three color deck. Yeah. So that part of it is relatively nice. Out number is going to help take care of that creature. Two of them, however. Now we head back Kenji's way. 
The problem here, of course, is that Hellkite is still on the table. You'll get a block here. Four damage is going to come across. The follow-up here from Kenji as Olsen's down to three. Is Kozilec Channeler a land will trigger the Hellkite? And I take it back. Olsen will get one, now one more draw step. There's a Swamp. Ah, the Silent Skimma. Not going to get it done here. One of your favorites. <laughs> I do love it. Yeah, one of your favorite cards. The uh, 4-mana 04. It's silent. It doesn't make a noise. Yeah, sorry. It's OK. There you go. There Just you go. Just sort of hovering about. Yes, yes. Doesn't even attack for any damage. Makes no noise. And so you're not going to be making any noise this game. Going to draw an attack with everything. Will Egashira. The Skimmer can block if it'd like, but it won't even bother us. Kenji Egashira is going to win this game and match her over Ali Olsen. Two games to zero. Blue-red with a Devoid theme is going to win the first match of the day here from Atlanta over the Jun deck from Ali Olsen. Numat the Nummy off to a great start here. I saw a, a very good curve of removal there. Fend off Olsen's aggressive start in game number one. And game two took too long for Olsen to get out of the gates. And Egashira just with a good curve of creatures able to get it done without much fanfare.